Hey, how are you doing? Uh, the guy above this room does use his room as a gaming facility. So I really hope he doesn't just randomly scream. Um, he has done that a couple times. Please don't do it this time. Okay, today I wanted to talk about some compassionate techniques that I learned to help me manage my dermatillomania based on the back of my last video, which I'll link up there for you to check out, um, which I was talking about, does clear skin solve compulsive skin picking? Um, I found out from my own experience that that is not the case. I wanted to kind of talk a little bit more about that, but also what I put in place to make myself feel a hell of a lot better. This is on the back of a conversation that I had yesterday with someone who checked that video out um, and lovely, lovely person got in touch with some amazing questions, just kind of asking what have you actually put in place? The things that you had mentioned about helping you manage your dermatillomania, what were they? What has really helped your urges to skin pick decrease a lot less? So in this video, I'm going to discuss them. Now, before I start, I just want to quickly say thank you so much for checking this video out. If you enjoy what I'm talking about, then please hit that like button. If you have any questions on this topic, please also put them in the comment section below and I will most definitely answer them as soon as I can. If you're enjoying the content I'm putting out on this channel, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me getting to know others that really can understand what I've been going through. It just... It's really life-changing for me, and I hope that this is helping you in some way too. Okay, let's get to it. The first thing I noticed when I had clearer skin was that my mind was going towards something else almost instantaneously. That is because of dermatillomania being a mental condition. It is connected to obsessive compulsive disorder. So it means that your mind is very much wired to look for something to fix. It's very much a fix mentality. So if there isn't something to fix, a mind goes crazy because you don't know what the hell to focus on. When I had clearer skin, as soon as my skin started to clear up and I was not really used to that, I felt, I believed that I would be satisfied for life and that would be it. What I realized was that as soon as that was the case, my mind would look towards other things. So I started to become obsessive over my weight or I would become obsessive over exercise or it would be food, or it would be my surroundings. And these are the things, this is what I call sidestepping. And if we're not careful, if we're not actually really doing what we can to manage our dermatillomania, we can very easily sidestep into another compulsive behavior. It happens quite often. And that's also the case of why some people have maybe trichotillomania, which is compulsive hair pulling, um, as well as dermatillomania. For example, we can often sidestep from one mental condition to another mental condition if we don't know how to manage it in a more self-compassionate way. So in order to help me and help my mind from sidestepping into another compulsive behavior, I had to first sit myself down and really lay it into me that perfectionism does not exist. It is not real. It's something that we get taught. And for many years, we get taught that perfection is this way. And then, you know, in a few years after that, perfection will be this way and it will be this way. I mean, for example, let's take a look at the way things are right now. Uh, maybe back in like the, early, the 90s for women, it was all about having really massive balloon boobs, right? That was the thing. Like I'm talking, you know, Pamela Anderson kind of time and that was perfection, right? And so there's so many women that were trying to look like this. Fast forward to these days, especially the last 10 years, and now it's all about big butts because we've got people like the Kardashians, for example, that, ha that have a certain look about them. And now, uh, you know, we fixate on this is the ideal, we gotta strive towards that. I mean, these are just examples here, but what I'm trying to say is that perfection of, of what we believe to be constantly changes. And let's not forget that if we all looked a certain way, wouldn't really be individual, wouldn't really be unique. There would not be anything to us that would make us really different from anybody else. So I had to really sit myself down and understand that it's not about trying to be perfect, it's trying to be happy and content with me. The next thing I realized, other than being a perfectionist, was realizing that I was also extremely empathic. 
which is in other words a highly sensitive person. I had shielded it for so long, covered things up and built this real hard exterior, nothing could get past me. I didn't realise that I was actually extremely sensitive. Now luckily for me I have an amazing partner who has been by my side and helped me to kind of surface these deep rooted issues. I'm not saying that everybody needs a partner to get these emotions out obviously if you're single there are you know there's people that you can speak to a family member a friend or a loved one or even a trained counselor therapist there are definitely ways that you can allow these emotions to surface and embrace the fact that you're sensitive there's actually nothing wrong with being sensitive with being you know extremely caring extremely loving we're kind of told uh, directly and indirectly that being sensitive is like a negative thing so I do advise you to kind of check that out if you feel like you are also maybe secretly a highly sensitive person there's some great books um, on audible the next thing I had to do was address my judgmental behavior that was a hard one especially for my ego it did take a knock I was like oh my god I thought I was an angel no not the case I realized that I was actually extremely judgmental so much so that I was being judgmental to others um, because I couldn't like stop people in the street and say something about them I, I realized that I was actually being extremely judgmental to those that I cared about most and that I loved most mainly because they were just there and I was able to talk to about it you know I would have snide remarks on what they were eating or maybe what they were how they were dressing or anything really but what it came down to was the fact that I was extremely judgmental about myself and you've got to remember that if you have someone in your life that's extremely judgmental it makes you feel really bad about yourself it actually has nothing to do with you it's got everything to do with them it's such a big big thing and I do believe if we knew that from a very young age then maybe we wouldn't be dealing with what we're dealing with now but hey now another tip that I totally recommend you getting on board with doing is writing a letter to yourself. Um, this was a technique I learned when I was in counselling a few years ago. I realised I was a younger version of myself uh, that was still quite upset, quite frustrated from things that happened when I was younger that made me compulsively skimpic today. I felt unable to communicate emotionally how I was feeling about certain things and so because of that I had a lot of built up energy inside, a lot of tension that I needed to release. I started sending myself some letters. Um, it would be from Big Kim, which is me, um, and Little Kim would be the inside me. By doing this, it helped me to understand what it was that the inner me was needing. What did I need to help me feel better and to help me close a chapter that I still obviously felt extremely raw and fresh and fragile over, but instead of helping myself at the time, I obviously just created a shield and tried to ignore. So if this is something that kind of resonates with you, I would start writing yourself some letters and write yourself some responses. Um, I used to do it every few days just to kind of let any, any feelings, any thoughts kind of surface before I would write my reply. Next one I started incorporating into my life was mindfulness meditation. I used Headspace app. You can do a free trial or you can pay for like monthly or annually. I found that to be really useful. I started with 10 minutes in the morning every day um, and upped it when I really needed to press pause on my mind a little bit. It really helped me to allow the stresses to kind of lift off and let me feel a lot more breezy in my mind. So I would definitely check that out. It doesn't have to be Headspace, that's just an example. There are many others out there. There's also a ton of free videos on YouTube, but I would definitely, definitely look into meditation. It is absolutely amazing to help any overactive, overwhelming minds that are going haywire with anxious thoughts. The next thing I did was exercised, but I did it within a no pressurizing way. I realized that I, you know, I love being outdoors. Every time I'm out with nature, walking around, just to give me that fresh air in my lungs and also to raise my testosterone. It helps you clear your mind a lot more. That's why when people are really angry or upset, they go for a walk or they go work out. It's literally because the testosterone is raised 
in your brain and that allows you to think clearly. So I upped my exercise with the idea to make myself feel a bit better and every time I would get an urge to skin pick I would go move literally. I would get up and go move in some way or another even if it was like um, an abs exercise in the house or if it was just walking around the block. The idea was to help me clear my mind and the goal wasn't on trying to be thin or to look a certain way. It was literally to help me feel clear minded. I also spent more time trying to figure out what kind of meals or snacks or ingredients, whatever, I was putting into my body that actually made me feel good. Um, a lot of the time we are super pressurising on what we eat. You know, say if there's a birthday party and everybody's having a slice of cake and you want to have one but you're feeling really bad about it so you don't have one and then you're kicking yourself and then you just kind of feel really awkward about the whole situation. Um, I had to kind of get, push myself past this and just made me realize like, you know, if I want a treat, then I'll have the treat. Or if I want to have something that really just fuels my body and makes me feel really energized and good, then I'll do that. But the goal again is for me to feel good and to feel like I'm looking after my body, like an act of self-love and self-care rather than the goal in mind and the pressure to look a certain way. I started to think about how I was spending my time and I started to introduce little bits that I knew I really enjoyed on a more regular daily basis. If I wrote the list in the morning of what I needed to get done um, and I made sure the one that I was I would usually really procrastinate from doing, if I got that done first, anything else really was a bonus and I would find that my days would be a hell of a lot more productive when I'd get at least the one thing that I didn't want to get done done. After that I would make sure that I'd have a prize in place for me to feel a lot better and um, so later on maybe I'd watch an episode or two of my favourite series or I'd run myself a nice bubble bath or I would light some lovely candles or read a book that it makes me feel really good inside. Also taking the time to have alone time um, and realising just how much I needed that. As an empath as well, when you're highly sensitive, you don't realise how much energy that you really absorb until you actually feel completely drained. Now let me ask you this, have you ever went somewhere, a social occasion and the people that are there, you really enjoy their company, you have a great time but you come back and you're absolutely exhausted? And let me ask you another question, when you feel really exhausted like that, do you then skim pick for longer to try and like days out of that and kind of rebalance yourself? That is because you probably absorbed a lot of energy. So what I started to do was realise when Actually, you know what, even if it sounds like a cool thing to do, I'm not going to because I need some alone time and realising that I don't actually have to feel obliged for every little thing in my life. If I don't want to do something that is perfectly okay, I'm a grown woman, I can say no and I can say yes when I want. If I need to be alone and watch a movie on my own or go for a walk or just because I wanted to save a bit of money, and that's totally fine. I would say no and... I would feel a lot better for it. This is a really important one and I do believe meditation really helps you to do this. That's why I definitely advise you to get on that as soon as possible. Now, observing the urge. So when it happens, what the idea is, is instead of going to do the action and actually skim pick, it's actually taking a step back mentally and asking yourself, how has this come about? What is the cause of this urge? Because ultimately, like, it is a pressure, yeah? And if you feel pressure, where has the pressure come from? Now, a lot of the time, I would notice that I would be skin picking a lot because I was tired, but I didn't want to go to sleep for whatever reason. Say I didn't really want to go work the next day, or I had to go meet this person, or call this friend, or whatever, but I really just needed some time on my own, and I was putting off doing something. I would skin pick. A lot, a lot of this is built on pressure and how, what can I do in my life to make things feel a lot less pressurizing so that I can still get them done, but the urge to skin pick is not there. So that is why it's really important to make a list first thing every morning so that you have ideas of what you need to get done. Um, I strongly suggest doing the main one first, so one that you would probably put off doing, say you were gonna work out in the morning, but you ended up uh, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, and then you skin pick, and then it's time to go to bed, and so you feel crap because you didn't get to work out. Get it done first thing in the morning, and then literally anything else is a bonus. You will find that the pressure to skin pick is not there, and if it is, it is majorly decreased. 
The next one I suggest, which is a really, really big one for me, was making sure that you do get to the root of the problem and talk to someone if you believe that they have helped you get into this obsessive compulsive attitude and mentality. Now, for me, for example, I know that it was a family member who made me feel a certain way from when I was younger. And as I got older, into my teens and into my 20s, um, I still felt very inadequate. Now, it was really important that I built up that courage without the pressure and knowing that when I felt ready, I can talk to them about it and coming at it with a place of love and care, not resentment, not anger, not frustration, um, but just kind of making them aware that this is a really big thing um, and talking to them about it so that they understand how you really feel about maybe what happened years ago that, that really helped paint a picture um, to the person that you are today and, and the mental condition that you're working with on a daily, daily basis. It's important that we get to the root of the problems. And if that is a person in your life that, that has made you feel a certain way about yourself, then you have to address that at one point or another. You do hear about how the voices of our parents or people that we looked up to so much when we were younger, that their voices end up becoming our inner voices. So if you were hearing a lot of pressure, pressurizing words or negativity uh, or making you feel quite low about yourself, then that will become your inner voice if you don't actively work on changing that. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you have some tips that you can take away with you and maybe start to implement. Please let me know how you get on with them in the comment section below, or you can shoot me a direct message over on Instagram or TikTok. Um, oh yeah, I am new on TikTok, by the way. I was like an old grandma at first trying to navigate myself around, but now I'm having so much fun. So please come see me, we can be friends. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna go now. I'm sure that guy's gonna start playing his game very soon. I'll speak to you very shortly. Have an amazing week.